Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sohail Ali Show. Guys, I'm so, so happy today to be joined by this guy is hilarious. He's an Indianapolis native. He is a former winner of Indiana's Funniest, and he has his debut special, Public Inconvenience, out now on Amazon Prime and Peacock. Folks, Lucas Waterfill is with me today. Lucas, how are you doing, buddy? Great, great. Thank you for having me. Like I mentioned, you have a, you have a your debut special is out uh, on uh, on all platforms. I want to encourage people to check out your social media. For those who don't know, Lucas is hilarious. He's been doing comedy. Uh, has it been eleven years now? It's been like nine or ten, probably ten. Going on, yeah, over ten years. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, winner of indie oh. indie's funniest. Like the very first time you did stand up comedy, um, where was it? Uh, what was that experience like and what made you want to do it? I started out with Rockers uh, and Open Mic. Um, uh, and I did like three or four minutes and I had yeah. like two laughs. And I thought, this is the best feeling ever. And I kept with it. I mean, I started it as like a bucket list saying like I wanted mm. to. I wanted to get this off my bucket list and then I fell in love with it and had the delusion that I was good. Mm-hmm. I think when you're first starting out, that's all you have is like delusion and like, yeah. like you kind of latch on to one laugh or two yeah. laughs or like one joke you have, you know? Um, Cause it's all about like it's all about like five minutes at a time when you first start out. Like I got my mm-hmm. first five minutes and mm-hmm. then like if I have five minutes I can do a guest spot. If I have ten minutes, you know, I can host. If I have fifteen I can feature. So it, it's just um that's all you're really working with. And like, mm-hmm. you know, every every gig, every, you know, drink ticket, every 10 bucks, you know, like, is the biggest deal in the world. Mm. Like, like, you have to blow it. You have to, like, be a little delusional. And you mm-hmm. have to be, like, you have to blow it out of proportion to, like, keep... Uh, keep like doing it and keep grinding and keep like uh, working working on it because if you wait for a big break it's gonna take forever so no absolutely man and i mean you're doing it you uh and you just started a, a new show i saw uh how's that been going new show oh yeah we have to get you out there um yeah, I'm, I'm, um, me and Carrie C are doing a weekly showcase open mic, um, at State Street Provisions. And, oh, yeah. um, um, and, you know, it's good. It, uh, we're doing 10 minutes each every, um, Every show, so that's good for us. Nice. And then we have, uh, you know, three open mic spots, two feature spots, and a headliner. And we're just trying to, um, we're just trying to get um, more people into it, and sure. you know, build the scene up. And, yeah, um, we have a good stage, good venue. It's at. Um, it's at Natural State Provisions on Dorman Street. So um, had they had they ever done a show there before? Or is it their first time doing comedy there? Yeah, I think it's their first time doing comedy. All right, and they're nice. excited. They're excited about it. That's so awesome. It's, it's um, you know, it's something to keep active and keep. Yeah, no doubt. Keep keep hustling. And, Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. I wanted to, I did want to ask, you know, like you said, you know, doing stand up comedy was a, a bucket list item of yours and something that most people would be, you know, terrified to do. I was terrified to do it and, and still get ter scared to do it, you know, early on now. And, um, but you know, that delusions keeping, keeping me going too, you know, we're, we're not, we, we have a healthy amount, sometimes not so healthy, but you, you still need it. But what about like, were you always into comedy? Did you love comedy? I think I, I read something like, you know, you love like, like Norm Macdonald, um, RIP, um, Mm. like, you know, kind of people you watched or things you watched growing up that like, you know, influenced your comedy sensibilities. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, all my, all my favorites are dead now. Um, like my favorites growing up were, uh, Norm MacDonald, George Carlin, and Patrice mm. O'Neill. And, mm. you know, like I, I grew up on like watching Louis, Louis C.K. and Bill Burr mm -hmm. and like that stuff. And um, I just like, I love George Carlin. Like, George Carlin is my favorite of all time. Um, nice. Like, he's my girl or whatever, but I, I just like how he, I don't know, he kind of, I miss the kind of like like anarchist like lefty kind of political stuff mm. of his and like um, he did it in a way that casted a wide net mm. like like he would have people laughing that um he, I guess what I'm trying to say is he put in a, he put things in a way that people could relate to it that wouldn't usually relate together. You know, wouldn't be in the same crowd, but he would be yes. able to like dissect a problem in a right. way that like people from different walks of life can relate to. In mm. backgrounds, and I miss that. Like, I miss that lefty kind of, you know, anarchist kind of uh, um, wave of comedy. Yeah. I think we're kind of like stuck in this more alt right kind of like wave. And it's weird. It's a weird, it's a weird place to be in. Um, yeah. Um, Comedy used to be like punk and used to be like uh, lefty kind of, but now it's like bro -y, I feel like in some instances. I don't yeah, know. Like, no, I, I, I definitely feel that. I feel like the pendulum kind of, you know, it swings back and forth over time. But, uh, but I mean, yeah, like Carlin talk about like weaving, you know, making you laugh about subjects that aren't inherently funny, right? War and abortion, yeah, war, war all the fun stuff. A, war and abortion and then like like uh not my not in my backyard like who has a not in, who has a nimby joke and has like thousands of people laughing at yeah a nimby joke like so it's that kind of um that's like a big influence on me yeah and like i mean that's what i try to do is like because we're in the Midwest and, you know, we have to appeal. If we don't appeal to, like, Trumpers and right-wingers, like, we're not going to make it out here. Like, we have to because that's, you know, 80% of the crowd. So, I know. I, I yeah. get up on shows. I go, how about the Taliban, huh? That guy's crazy. Yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeesh. How about the Taliban? Yeah. Um <laughs> But yeah, so it you gotta that's what the art is. You gotta learn how to like talk about shit and make yeah. it funny forever. Yeah. So Yeah, man. And yeah. like speaking of like, you know, your art, you know, how you do it, which honestly, man, I'm not just, you know, blowing smoke. Like it's 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 masterful. It's it is so precise. And I feel like I was curious, you know, like kind of what your creative process looks like like how do you go from an idea or inspiration to you know trying it out like what's your kind of 
do you have like a kind of process you like to do before you know like okay i think i'm onto something here Yeah, so like I'll have an idea and then try it out on stage and whatever gets a laugh, like whether it be like, you know, a punchline, a sentence, a word, I kind of latch on to that and kind of expand. Like what about that word or that phrase was funny and kind of expand on it. And a lot of times like, you don't know what's funny until you say it like oh like write something in my head and be like this part's the punchline and then i'll say it and it's like something completely different like Mm. right oh the crowd thinks that's funny like and just playing playing with the words and playing with how how it's like a puzzle like how Like, just because you say something a little different, it could be funny or it could be depressing or sad or, like, Yeah. you know, like, so the line between, like, being funny and being morbid and, like, like pissing people off Yeah. is, like, a fun thing to play with, you know? Yeah. So um, Yeah. I think that's what that's what keeps it entertaining for people that um, for comics like writing stuff and just seeing what makes people laugh. And you got to start out like people starting out. I tell people that are starting out to like just. Like, if you're not making yourself laugh, like, it's not worth it. Like, you gotta, like, do shit that makes you, like, you laugh. Mm. And because there's a lot of crippled stuff that I could do that would make so many people laugh, but I've heard it every day of my life forever. And Mm. that shit, that shit's hacky to me. Mm. Um, So I don't want to do shit that is happy to me or that I'm tired of. Like, that's how you see, like, comics get tired of comedy so fast because they're doing what the audience wants them to do and not what they want to do. And, like, Right. you got to find that fucking balance. Because Yeah, man. you gotta you gotta be able to relate to people, but hey, Sarah, Hey. you gotta you gotta be able to relate to people. You see that asshole? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, what are you talking about, bro? Look at this. <laughs> Look at my asshole. Um, you gotta be able to relate to people, but not, That's but still like. Okay, we have enough. She said, I, I know an audience wants to see this right here. I'll show you. This is what they want. Give the people what Uh, they want, baby. she might me okay um yeah so it's a balance like it's just finding that balance and like um not doing what people want you to do doing what you want to do but still being relative being being really able to relate right exactly to the audience exactly yeah no when you said that because i was i was gonna ask you like what advice would you give yourself you know for people starting out and i feel like that in particular really speaks to like your your punk rock essence you know because i did read that you 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 were in a you were in punk rock bands in high school is that Oh yeah, I was in like hardcore band. yeah Yeah, and I grew up in like the punk scene and the punk Yeah, so exactly. It's like that kind of that I don't know, I feel like that that background or that vibe kind of you bring to comedy in the sense where you're like, Yeah, dude, I'm not gonna go for this dumb ass low hanging fruit, you know, shit that Yeah. that I would get sick of doing. I would get sick of saying, but rather, you know, go for that inner it's harder. Obviously it's harder, but the payoff is greater. Yeah, and like I'm like, why do this? If you're doing shit you don't want to do, like you might as well work in a fucking cubicle, you know? You might as well work a day job 
if you're doing shit you don't want to do, you might as well get paid a regular paycheck. Like, mm. like if we're not doing shit we want to do, like, what's the point of doing comedy? Like, you might as well fucking, you know, work at Walmart or work at, you know, yeah, a cubicle or whatever. Hey. That's right. And and the, the great thing about the cubicle job is you can kill. People think you're so funny at these jobs, yeah. dude. You ever crack a joke at work, man? It's like you're like, Am I the greatest ever? Um, yeah, that's why that's why there's so <laughs> many goddamn open micers, because they think they're the fucking funniest person at their job. So it must be funny on stage. Hey man, I kill in a team's meeting, but um yeah exactly mm. what 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 uh you know you you mentioned some great advice for comics what did you get some great advice that you heard when you were coming up you know that or maybe somebody told you or something you heard that stuck with you that you know was like a guide for you maybe in comedy as I, well that you enjoyed i mean brit to him was good i mean he gave me good advice he said never he said, always take a paying gig, mm. which was good. I think, I mm. mean, it seems simple, but it's like you're still doing this as a fucking job. But like, this is right. Like, like always take, because I canceled a weekend at Crackers for a show that wasn't paying. And he's like, what are you doing, man? He's, I'm like, well, I took that show before. He's like, I don't, it doesn't matter how, like, Crackers is paying you. Like, if, you, if you're if you getting paid at a show, right? like, it doesn't matter what you take before. You take the paying gig or the gig that's paying you more. And mm. I took that to heart. I mean, if mm. a gig is paying more, I would... I would take that gig rather than the gig that's not paying um, right. as much. So, I right. mean, you still, you, yeah, it's an art form. Yeah, you got to do what you want. But at the same time, you know, you're paying your bills with this shit. Like, it's a business. Like, right. you know, until, I, I, I almost took that as like, he said, you, Brent told you to always take a, the paying gig. I almost took that as like, don't, especially when you're first starting out or coming up or whenever, just like do any and all shows to like, because yeah. you'll learn from, you'll learn something, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, you know, if they're paying you, do it. But mm -hmm. I, I'm also like, I mean, I've taken gigs where, like, I get a lot of, like, non-profit work. And, like, because of my situation, like, um, because of my disability, like, a lot of, like, work, like, at charity work. And if they pay me, I'm like, do you know my material? Like, I'm not... I'm not your <laughs> cliche crippled, like <laughs> warm and fuzzy, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're not there. I'm not, to, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not America's Got Talent, you know. Like, it's like. Uh, I actually think you're going to get on that. You think? I don't I do. know. I, I, I do. Talk I'm sorry. Talk about getting money. Like, I would tell totally yeah, you. Yeah, dude. America's Got Talent. You know? I, let's, I mean, we're going to, I. We'll we'll get you on that because that is I feel like I that's something I was gonna mention, but I'm like, how have you not you know what I mean? I feel like everyone's probably said that to you at this point, but like yeah, that's um I feel like it's in the cards. But um but yeah, and that's something I read too, is like, you know, you're you're you love it. You love it, it's your life. You're not there to, you know, encourage, you're necessarily inspired, you're there to do it and do it the best you can. And that's how you've been yeah. doing it. And you uh recorded and put out your debut special uh, two years ago now, I think. Yeah. And, like, how was that experience like for you? That was your first one, you know? What was it like putting it together? What was the feelings, putting it out, the reception, all that? 
Oh, it was great. I I did it with my friend uh, Ryan Pennington. He's a director and editor who lives in Hollywood. I uh, lives in L.A. And um, we put it all together ourselves and then sold it to um, Comedy Dynamics. And, um, it, it, you know, it was something that I had for a while. I've been working on that material for a while. And, um, you know, it, it really, I like it because it's like front to back. It's very cohesive and mm. very like, I think it has a message behind it, which comedy doesn't have to have it, but a message, but this one definitely does. Mm. And um, I'm, I'm really proud of that. And I'm really proud how indie kind of got behind me and like mm. the white rabbit kind of got yep. behind me to Shout produce out, white this rabbit. thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And like yeah. I got I got three shows together and sold out all three shows. Okay, I was about and, to ask how many shows you taped. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, and and Ryan did an excellent job like editing it and splicing it together. Oh yeah. So it looks like so it's cohesive and uh like it's just it was great and like no matter what happens i have that you know i mm -hmm. have that for forever and that that's you know the best part is when other crippled people love it i love it when other crippled people love it when they're like, yes yeah. like i have a friend that does documentaries she's like that's the best bit of uh, crippled comedy that I've seen and I think that means so much to me when people like me can relate to it and they get it and yes. so um, yeah you'll look in the comments and then someone will be like oh you know you shouldn't be making jokes and then someone will reply and be like hey man I'm also crippled this guy's yeah. fucking hilarious All right? yeah, yeah. shut the fuck up yeah <laughs> dude that comedy <laughs> Dude, my comments are fucking absurd. Like, <laughs> I I can't like my comments on my social media. People are just so fucking rude. It's crazy. It's yeah, absurd. Like, I'm like, I guess this is fame now. Like, just people doing <laughs> yes. shit crazy to you. But, mm -hmm. but like. When you can cause fights, that's you made yeah, it right there. Yeah, <laughs> right. And and when Cat Williams shares your reel, I I, I oh, saw that. Dude, that was so good. I love that. I was bro. Like for for a week, I was like telling everybody. I dude. would answer my phone and be like, "Did you see Cat Williams?" <laughs> I'm like, "Hell yeah!" yeah. Talk Hell about yeah. A, talk about an inspiration, like, dude. That, yeah, that, man. That, that dude, like. I remember watching that game when I was like twelve. So yeah, it's like no doubt. it's like with this green suit. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, Vibrant. I've had I've had people yell out Mr. What's it? Mr. Team Team to me. So <laughs> heckle me with Cat William shit. Hell yeah. And then Cat William shares my shit. I don't yeah, know, man. maybe it's not him, maybe it's his team, but I'll take it. Nah, man. Nah, because sometimes Cat will just share like a post that is like, it's like wrongly cropped or like it's like blurry. And it's like, yeah, that's probably yeah. him. <laughs> like, I don't think there's a team. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. definitely him. But and that was sick, man. Because I was, I think, one of the clips from your like closing out helium sets, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a newer <laughs> bit. It's not yeah. even off of our specials. They're not that felt good. Um, yeah, man, you've yeah, got like a pretty yeah. awesome following going, like sixty thousand on Instagram, ten thousand TikTok. It's it's really it's really great yeah. to see that you know getting the exposure. I need to get that TikTok up, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean that's how we get paid nowadays. Exposure, dude. I could die from exposure. 
Um, <laughs> yes. but, but, you know, hopefully it translates to tour dates and uh, money, hopefully soon. Um, um, yeah, I, I just, it's, it's weird to see, it's weird how, like, I don't know. Social media is so weird. It's so absurd. It's such an absurd um, place. Like, just it's so interesting to go in the comments and like see what people are debating about and um, what they're saying and like how they relate to a joke or don't relate to a joke. In my intention with the joke and yeah. what what they actually get from it, like in like social media is just like I, like it's crazy. It's yeah. just like I don't know, it blows my mind how I could say one thing and people just like I had this vote joke about Democrats and people started calling me a Trumper and like Wait, was it the sheep clip? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, people are people... like I'm like you it's a joke, obviously. You don't Bro, get this fucking joke. That's and like, crazy. Then they get all pissed. I'm like, you're proving the joke. You're like <laughs> proving the actual, like the, like the tell me, irony. yeah, tell me you didn't get it without telling me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> that's awesome. You're you're proving my point, which I don't know yeah. what my point wasn't to begin with, because it was just a fucking stupid offhand joke. Like I love that the, the fucking laugh at post. the end of, ties it together. I wish, yeah, I, I, we should probably just go in there and anybody who gets upset just reply with a sheep emoji, probably. Yeah, but yeah. um. But yeah, man. I mean, it clearly, you you strike some chords there with people. But at the same time, it's gotten your stuff. And I, I know a lot of your clips got millions and billions of views. So I mean, keeping yeah. it going, right? I mean, take the good yeah, and uh, it's inspiring. It's, it's something. It's yeah, something. yeah. And now uh, I know you have a website. I, uh, I'll link all your stuff in the description. I want people to check out your stuff. Follow Lucas on on everything and and keep updated. He'll he is always sharing what he's up to but uh yeah. but yeah man uh what about what are you looking forward to coming up we talked about you got some festivals coming up you know festivals. yeah i'm i'm in uh ten thousand laughs i'm in um uh, i'm in flyover i'm nice. doing i'm doing uh i'll be in chicago in a couple weeks um, oh chicago what are you playing in chicago I'm doing Lincoln Lodge in Chicago. Nice, nice. Um, and filming the documentary. Which oh, should be fun. nice. Yeah, it's nice. this documentary called Crip Trip. Um, some friends from Canada are filming. Um, so that'll be fun. Nice. Um, yeah, I I got stuff going. Hell yeah. Um, you know how it is. You get to a point and you. I need to get better preempting my calendar. Like, I'm like, I got all this shit booked, and then it goes to the end of that shit, and I'm like, oh shit, I got nothing. <laughs> to so, sure. uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm staying busy. Thank you so much, for dude. Having I me. appreciate you, man. No, seriously, appreciate you taking the time, and uh, I'll see you. So I'll be at Helium Tuesday. If you, I don't know if you're hanging out, doing the mic and stuff. Hanging out in I got, Helium. I got my show, man. Oh, you got your own Tuesday night now. Fuck. Well, we'll pop over yeah, there. Provisions. By. Yeah, hell yeah. Provisions in Indianapolis and uh, every Tuesday. So we'll definitely yeah. uh, come see you there. Lucas Waterfill, everybody. Uh, thank you, Lucas, buddy. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you. Real quick before you click away. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment below, and subscribe for all future videos. Hit that bell icon to be notified for all uploads. Have a good one.